All right, welcome back to another video on the Mass Channel. It's your teacher Muslim here. In this video, we're going to be looking at expected frequency. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to calculate the expected frequency of an event uh, using n times p. So let's have a look at this. The expected frequency is the number of times that a particular event should occur based on the event's theoretical probability. or relative frequency, okay, which is experimental probability, as well as how many times the experiment is repeated. So here's an example. We know that theoretically the probability of flipping heads is one out of two. So if a coin is tossed 100 times, the expected number of heads will be half of 150. Okay, so here is the formula. Expected frequency is just n times p, the number of times the experiment is repeated times the probability of the event. I always like to do the probability first, so probability times the number of times the experiment is repeated. It doesn't really matter. So let's have a look at an example. Two coins are tossed 120 times, and the results are recorded. What is the sample space of flipping two coins? So what could we get? What's the list of all the possible outcomes? That's what sample space means when we flip two coins. So we could get heads and heads, heads and tails, tails, heads, or tails and tails. There are four elements or four outcomes in the sample space. What's the probability of each element? Well, we can see here they all have one in four chance of occurring. What is the expected frequency for two heads? So here, now this question is asking expected frequency. So if we were to uh, do this experiment 120 times, how many times do you think we'll get two heads? That's what the question is asking. So we know that expected frequency is equal to the probability, one quarter, because that's the probability of getting two heads times how many times do we repeat the experiment? 120 times. So that's equal to 30. What is the expected frequency for a head and a tail in any order? Well, head and a tail, or tail and head, that's two out of the four. So the expected frequency will be equal to two out of the four times the 120. That's how many times we repeat the experiment which is going to equal to 60. Question 2. The probability of a red traffic light at an intersection is one third. How many red traffic lights are expected on a trip that passes through 54 intersections? So, expected frequency is equal to the probability, which is one third, times the number of times we repeat this experiment. In this case, it's 54, because there are 54 intersections. So we type that in the calculator. One third times 54 is 18. So we expect there to be 18 red traffic lights. Okay, it might not be that, it might be more than that, it might be less, but that's how many we should expect. All right, so let's have a look at this question. A bag contains six yellow discs and five red ones. Two are drawn in succession from the bag. The first is not replaced before the second is drawn. This process is repeated 352 times. Question A. How many of the first are expected to be yellow? So we can see that there are 11 discs altogether. And out of the 11, six are yellow. So how many of the first discs are expected to be yellow? 6 out of 11 times 352. Because that's how many times the experiment was repeated. So we're going to put that in our calculator. And we get 192. How many of the first discs are expected to be red? Well. 
in order for it to be red, five out of the 11 are red. How many times do we repeat the experiment? 352 times. So let's put that in our calculator. We get 160. Now, of course, we don't really need to do that, right? What we could have done is just done 352 minus 192 because those that aren't yellow must be red. So if we did 352 minus 192, we'll get 160 as well. But let's just keep it to this. So we, we get used to doing the probability times the number of times the experiment is repeated. Question C says, how many double yellow discs are expected? Okay, so the probability, let's do this down here. The probability of yellow and yellow Let's draw a tree diagram. We could get yellow and then red, yellow and red, yellow and red. Okay. So because we know that it's not replaced, there are six out of 11 that are yellow, five out of 11 that are red. But if we take one out, now there's only 10 to choose from. Only 10 to choose from. So these are all out of 10. So if we've taken a yellow already, there were six, now there's only gonna be five yellow. If we took a yellow, there's technically there's still five red that, uh, to choose from, so this is five. If we took a red, well, there's still six yellows in the bag. If we took a red, oh, there's only four red left to choose from out of the 10. Okay. All right, so the probability of getting yellow and yellow is actually six out of 11 times five on 10. Six out of 11 times five on 10. That's the probability of getting yellow and yellow, which is three on 11. Therefore, how many double yellow discs are expected? The probability of getting yellow and yellow times the number of times the experiment is repeated, 352. So we get 3 over 11 times 352, which is 96. All right, why don't you pause the video, have a go with question D, E, and F, and then you can continue playing the video to check your answers. All right, so this one we'll see. So question D, we want the probability of double red, so red and red. Here we can see red and red is five on 11 times four on 10. So five on 11 times four on 10, which is two on 11. So how many are expected? Two over 11 times 352. 64. All right, question E. How many are expected to have a first disc yellow and a second disc red? So the probability of yellow and then red, yellow and then red is six on 11 times five on 10. Three on 11. So this will be three on 11 times 352. 96. In question F, how many expected to have a first disc red and a second disc yellow? So question F, the probability of getting red first and then yellow is five on 11 times six on 10. Which is three on 11. So we can see here, it's gonna be exactly the same as question E, 311 times 352, which will give us an answer 96 as well. All right. Now we've got some HSE questions. So why don't you pause the video, have a go with the HSE questions and see if you can get them correct.
Okay, 2019. A roulette wheel has the number 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 36, where each of the 37 numbers is equally likely to be spun. If the wheel is spun 18,500 times, calculate the expected frequency of spinning the number 8. So the number 8. What is the probability of getting 8? Well, there's only one 8 out of the 37 numbers. And we're spinning this wheel 18,500 times. Five hundred. We expect there, if we were to spin the wheel eighteen thousand five hundred times, we expect to get eight five hundred times. All right, twenty eighteen. An experiment has three distinct outcomes A, B, and C. Outcome A occurs fifty percent of the time. Outcome B occurs twenty three percent of the time. What is the expected number of times outcome C would occur if the experiment is conducted five hundred times? So we, re we need to remember that the sum of all the probabilities of all the outcomes will always equal to 1. All right, so probability of A plus the probability of B plus the probability of C will equal to 1. So we've got 50% plus 23% plus the probability of C is equal to 1. So we know the probability of C or equal to 1 minus 50% minus 23%, which is 0 0.27. So the expected frequency of C is the 0 0.27, the probability, times the number of times the experiment was conducted, which is 500. So we're going to multiply that by 500, which is 135. So the answer is B. All right, here are two more. Why don't you pause the video and have a go with these two? All right, 2017. In a survey of 200 randomly selected year 12 students, it was found that 180 used social media. Based on this survey, approximately how many of the 75,000 year 12 students would be expected to use social media? So the expected frequency will equal to the probability. So here we've got an experimental probability, a relative frequency. Okay, 180 out of the 200 that do use social media. I'm going to multiply this by how many times the experiment was conducted, which in this case is sort of like saying 75,000. Because there are 75,000 students, year 12 students. So let's put that in a calculator. I'll get 67,500. Okay, so make sure you always read the question carefully. If the question said, how many of the 75,000 year 12 students don't use social media, then we'll need to minus this answer from 75,000. Okay. All right. And the last one for this video. Jacob has a large jar of silver coins. He adds 20 gold coins into the jar. He then seals the jar and shakes it to ensure that the gold coins are mixed in thoroughly with the silver coins. Jacob then opens the jar and takes out a handful of coins. In his hand, he has 33 silver and 4 gold coins. Based on Jacob's handful, if a coin is selected at random from the jar, what is the probability that it is a gold coin? So, based on his handful, we can see that that he had four gold coins. So what's the probability that it's gold? Well, there were four gold out of 37 coins that were in his hand. So now we can answer part two. Part two says, Jacob returns a handful of coins to the jar. Estimate the total number of coins in the jar. So let's, um, let's have a think about this. So he adds 20 gold coins 
and he got four of them. Okay, so what we could do is we could say, well, there were four gold in his hand, but there's actually 20 in the jar. 20 gold in the jar. Am I right in hand here? There were 33 silver in his hand. So how many silver are in the jar do we expect there to be? Well, we can see here that in order to get the 20, we multiply the four by five. So I'm gonna do the same thing to that 33 to give me 165. So it seems like from the 33 silver in his hand, we can assume that there are 165 silver coins in the jar. Can't spell, I don't know why I wrote jab. 165 silver coins in the jar. So the question says, estimate the total number of coins in the jar. Therefore, total number of coins in the jar is the 20 gold plus the 165 silver which is 185 coins great and so that's it for this video let's just recap what we looked at in this lesson so in this lesson we looked at expected frequency we said that expected frequency is the number of times that a particular event should occur based on the event's theoretical probability or relative frequency. And all we need to do is take the probability and multiply it by the number of times we conduct the experiment. Okay, so it's important for us to know uh, what the probability is. We might need to know what the sample space is. Okay, to write it out, we might need to um, draw a tree diagram, a weighted tree diagram, so that we can work out the probability of a two-step um, experiment. Okay, because then we're going to use that probability and multiply it with the number of times the experiment is conducted. All right, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please just comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you would like more content, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.